Hi everyone, Big Paulie back for a brand new video. This is going to be something a little bit different. There's no unboxings involved. There's no countdowns or reviews or any kind of stuff like that. This is just a little casual chat to talk about some health problems that recently struck me and uh, a visit to the A&E. And uh, I know a few people have asked exactly what happened um, a couple of days ago. So I just want to go over that. If you're not interested in anything to do with health, then by all means, just, you know, uh, cl click off the video. But for those that are curious and want to know what happened, stay tuned. OK, um, let's go back to the beginning. I'll try and not make this video half an hour. <laughs> Uh, but you know me. Yeah. Um, let's go back a couple of years. Um, OK, so for the last two years, I've been having stomach problems. I've had stomach cramps along the bottom of my stomach. I've had what felt like palpitations. It wasn't exactly heart palpitations, but it's kind of like up in the, the chest there. Um, like headness. What else have I had? Um, shortness of breath. Um, and I've had various tests over the last two years. I've had blood tests. I've had blood pressure tests. Um, I've had various tablets. You know, it was de determined that I was anemic. So I had to have some folic acid, which I'm still on now, which I will, I'll come to that. Uh, but yeah, over the last two years, it's been like that. Um, last year, up until summer, um, it had been like it, but then for like six weeks over the summer period, everything vanished. The whole lot completely went. Um, and I was just back to normal. Everything was back to normal. Um, and at that time, prior to then, back in March, I'd organised with my doctor to try and get an appointment with a, hang on a minute, gastroenterologist. <laughs> I can never get that word right. Yeah. Uh, and I was on like a waiting list and it took literally 15 weeks before I even got a letter or a phone call from the gastroenterologist. Gastroenterologist. Yeah. Uh, and I was getting to the point at the end of the summer where everything was perfect. And I was seriously considering cancelling the appointment because as far as I'm, I was aware, everything had righted itself. I'm glad I didn't. Um, but unfortunately, it wasn't an in-person appointment. It was a telephone appointment. And I explained the whole situation. I had to do a, I think it's a fit test. It's a, a faecal immunisation test. Poo test, in other words. Yes, you drop a bit of poo and they go through it all. And they look for microscopic blood um, that might be linked to like colon cancer and stuff like that. That um, that came back at a reading of 107. Obviously, you know, if you're not medically minded, you won't know what that is. But uh, according to the gastroenterologist, uh, that's perfectly fine. Uh, and he didn't see that I needed to have any more investigation into it. Because uh, if it had come back a lot higher, um, he was going to refer me and to have a colonoscopy. Yes, uh, have a tube stuck up my bum. <laughs> <laughs> and to have a little look around inside. Yeah, this was not the video that you signed up for, was it? <laughs> anyway, so uh, he, he he basically said, OK, we'll strike it off for four months and then we'll do another review, see if anything changes. And that was it. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, probably about, actually about a month ago, I started to get a pain kind of like underneath the left breast. And it's kind of like a stabbing pain. It wasn't continuous all the way through the day, um, but it's like, you know, someone with a screwdriver and you're just stabbing it in. It was like that. Uh, and believe it or not, whenever I burped, I also got the stabbing pain. And I also got a bit of achiness around my back, around the side here, and just around the back. Uh, and when I breathed in, it kind of like, it, I felt a bit of pain. So I contacted my doctor. Uh, obviously, it's an impossibility to actually see a GP. I think the last GP I saw was three years ago because it's all done by telephone now. 
uh, and e-consult forms and all that kind of thing. Oh, before the doctor, actually, let me go back a little bit. Before um, I contacted the doctor, uh, I actually just walked into Buckland Hospital here in Dover into the urgent care treatment centre when I started having these pains. Uh, I had to wait like three hours, just under three hours, because it was just a walk-in. Uh, and for the whole day, they only had one GP in the whole of the hospital. Um, they did some exams. They, I did a urine test. They took some bloods. They did the blood pressure, blood sugar, all that kind of stuff. Um, all done by a nurse because the GP wasn't available. Uh, and at that time, it was deemed that there was nothing they could do at, the, at that facility. It needed to be investigated further, you know, um, by either a GP or a hospital. Because uh, uh, the urgent care treatment centre is for something immediate that they can they can review and maybe assign drugs or that kind of stuff. So anyway, I got on got on with it. Uh, then I contacted my GP, went down, queued outside the front door to get an appointment, and it was the day of Avatar. It was the day that Avatar came out. So I think it was the sixteenth of December. I'm pretty sure. Uh, and I'd already got tickets and that was the day that the doctor was going to phone, but he could phone any time through the day. So I went to see Avatar at the IMAX, but I sat on the back row. Uh, the IMAX in Ashford, you, there's a lift that goes up to the top and then you've got a corridor that you walk along and then you come out at the back of the cinema. So I figured if I sit right at the back row uh, with my phone beside me, then if the phone rings, I can quickly dart out and um have a chat to the doctor in, in the corridor at the back which is what happened 10 minutes into the film so i don't think i missed much of the film <laughs> but uh yeah that happened and the doctor prescribed me some drugs uh for stomach problems um i can't remember the name of it i'll put the name of it down here i, I can never remember the name of it um yeah but he prescribed me those uh he's also going to set up a x-ray at some point which i knew wasn't going to happen until christmas or new year you know because everything's behind um so anyway i went and got the drugs started on them i've got a month's supply so uh, i'm i'm only a week or so into actually taking them a week or week and a bit so i still got a long time to go but it's i think it's supposed to like ease up the pain it's it's kind of like supposed to get rid of stomach cramps, stomach problems and attack any kind of like ulcers, stomach ulcers that you've got and dissolve it and that. So it's a little bit more aggressive than like Gaviscon or something like that. Um, so that was that. Um, and then last week um, I was in Tesco's with Papa Bowman. We were, I was walking around and... Uh, I was out of breath, so out of breath, just walking around the supermarket and I had to go back and sit in the car. You know, it was a struggle. It has been a struggle the last couple of the last couple of weeks with shortness of breath to going back a couple of months, maybe maybe two or three months. You know, noticing it when I was out on my Blu-ray hunts that I'd get out short of breath really quick. I thought it was just because I was unfit. You know, I'm back on Weight Watchers. I'm down a stone and 10 pounds, so that's really good. And I'm going to keep that going. Um, but I figured that's all it was. I went back to the car and then we went home. Um, and it started getting harder and harder to breathe. I was, I was doing like that, sitting on the chair. Um, and unfortunately, that day happened to be the day that ambulances and paramedics went on strike. Uh, and it was the day before I was said to myself, as long as I don't get ill on that day when they go on strike. Uh, I should have never said that, but I'm glad I did because uh, you'll find out in a minute. But yes, the day that ambulances, ambulance drivers, paramedics went on strike, that is the day I had the problem. So it was getting worse. I phoned 999. We had phone 999. I spoke to the lady on the other end. And they said, we're getting an emergency ambulance out to you straight away. Um, and I was expecting maybe an ambulance in a couple of hours time, driven by soldiers. You know, because we knew that the army were going to be helping out. 
Um, believe it or not, a, an ambulance turned up 30 minutes after the phone call. W yeah, 30 minutes um, with four paramedics. And it wasn't just an ambulance. It was a paramedic car as well. So I had two for the price of one. <laughs> and they came in. Uh, they stuck the things all over me. Did my blood pressure. Um, did my blood sugar. Uh, re read my heartbeat re reading and all that kind of stuff. Um, and the bloke, as they were there, the longer they were there for like half an hour, uh, the breathing started to get a bit better. But they wanted to take me to hospital anyway um, to see really what the what the problem was, what the you know underlying condition was, because uh, my blood pressure kept going up and down a little bit. So uh, yeah, uh, drove up to they drove you know the ambulance up to William Harvey Hospital, which is about a half hour drive from me, uh, and they bypassed the main A and E, um, and we I wouldn't say that we went to the front of the queue because that's a bit unfair but we kind of because it's to do with breathing it's more urgent so you've kind of go into a different section uh, and you get treated quicker for them to assess so I think we were up there for maybe an hour and a half uh, and then we had to go up to I can't remember the name of the ward well it wasn't a ward it was a it was like an urgent care assessment. Uh, so we, we stayed up there for a while. Um, I had my bloods taken up there. I think they took like five tubes full of blood. Uh, they went off uh, to be analysed. And then um, I, had it, I had to go down to have an x-ray, a chest x-ray. So I went down. When I came back, you know, it was I was out of breath going down. I was out of breath coming back up. You know what hospitals are like, you know, it's like like the x-ray is in Florida. <laughs> um, and I came back up and I sat down, started to get worse. It was like that constantly. Um, I then went into a separate room where the doctor was and the nurses. And I was just sitting there and it was getting unbearable. It was getting harder and harder to breathe. I was feeling more. I was feeling tingling on my fingers. I started to get a whistling in my ears. Um, it got worse and worse. I felt dizzy. Um, uh, and all I could feel, I was getting sweaty. I was getting all sweaty. Um, and you know that moment where you kind of know that you're going to faint and everything, you get all the funny colours and if, you can't hear anything. Um, and I just said, I'm going to faint, I'm going to faint. And the next thing I knew, there was about 10 people surrounding me, you know, nurses and doctors uh, trying to bring me to, trying to get me aware again. Uh, and dad says that I become totally unresponsive um, and it took them a couple of minutes to get me to come back. Which I, you know, it was just instantaneous for me. So they had to help me get me onto my feet and just lay me down onto the bed um, so that it would ease. Um, they did the blood pressure test and my blood pressure at that time, if you're familiar with blood pressure, uh, was around 70 over 50, which is bloody low. You know, the average blood pressure, I think, is between 120 and 140 over 70 or 90, something like that. So you can tell that really went down. My blood pressure was bloody low. Um, I, it eased up while I was laying on the bed. So, you know, all the time I was laying down, it was much better. And uh, I was, you know, stopped heavy breathing in that. But they didn't want to send me away, so um, they were going to get me a room. You know, they were going to get me into a ward for the night so they could check things out. Um, also, the bloods came back, the blood results came back, and I had a quite a quite an infection. Um, and I think that is to do with that's to do with the pain, the pain in the I had in the stomach and then the back, 
where it was difficult to breathe and the shortness of breath that I'd had for breath that I had for weeks. That was an infection building uh, because I remember when I went up to Buckland um, and had my and I was seen to up there, they did come back and said there's a slight infection. Uh, but maybe at that time it wasn't deemed um, enough, you know, serious enough to investigate. So I think that was one of the major contributing factors to what happened. So they admitted me for the night. Um, I was up in the room in that ward in the doctor's place. Um, Dad had already gone home, you know, there's nothing that he could do. You know, I was going to be admitted for the night for observation. So he went home and uh, I was up there for about two hours, I think, while they were preparing a room, you know, I think because yeah, you have to wait for people to leave and anybody to pick up, you know, to clean the area, do the bed and everything like that. Um, and it was probably about 10 o'clock at night, half past 10 o'clock at night. So two hours later or so. Um, that they wheeled me down to the ward. Um, it was comfortable, you know, I was comfortable laying in, 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 in the bed. Um, they made the bed and everything. And um, they ho hooked me up to uh, some fluids uh, because I, I guess I was dehydrated, which is one of the reasons why uh, you get low blood pressure. Um, so I got hooked up to a um, a drip all night. Yes, a drip on a drip. <laughs> yeah, so I had that drip. Uh, and also I had um, some um, antibiotics. They gave me some antibiotics, obviously for the infection. But um, I had like one tablet late at night. And then I had another tablet probably about three in the morning. And then another tablet about 11 in the morning. So only three tablets for the antibiotics. But they were bloody big they were big tablets so obviously they were quite powerful because I thought you know if you have antibiotics you either want it for like a week or two weeks and um it took about two or three three to four days for the antibiotics to actually kick in and I think what they were doing when I got to the ward and also in the morning they wanted to check my blood pressure as I was laying down and then standing up um, because it deemed that whenever I stood up the blood pressure dropped um uh, having low blood pressure is, means that you're not getting all the blood to your head um that kind of thing so uh, they they did do it um I found it a little bit difficult to walk to the toilet for the first time but um it got better you know I was on the drip so I had the antibiotics I had the fluids so that was all helping and um, I stayed in overnight. Um, unfortunately, I was in a ward with about four or five gentlemen that were probably about 90. Uh, and all night long, it was... <laughs> Bless them. But you can't do anything about it. You're in a hospital. It's full of sick people. So um, it wasn't constant all the way through the night. Um, but uh, it, it was very broken sleep through the night. But I was just happy to be there. Glad to be there. Um, the morning was good. You know, um, I had a lay in. <laughs> and I had my tablets. The nurses came to me. Um, I had more tests, more blood tests. Uh, I had more um, blood sugar tests, blood pressure tests. So they were constantly on it. Um, and then I, you know, I had to wait for the doctor to come. Uh, he came about, I think he came about 11 o'clock uh, and everything was, was, you know, was pretty good. And, um, they figured that it was, you know, it's perfectly fine for me to go home. You know, I'd had the treatment that I needed and it was time to go home. Um, I had lovely cups of tea, cups of coffee whenever I needed them. Um, I did get a meal, or two meals. Yeah, I had two meals. I had breakfast in the morning. This was on the Thursday. Um, I went in on the Wednesday night or Wednesday late afternoon, and on the Thursday morning I had breakfast. Uh, but I hadn't had I hadn't ate a lot all day on the Wednesday because I went into the hospital. Uh, I had porridge and a yogurt. I think it was. Yeah, the porridge was okay. 
very creamy, very light rice pudding-y uh, and just a yogurt. Um, and then they took me, you know, my dinner order uh, and I decided to have a roast dinner. So I had roast chicken and vegetables and everything. And uh, you know the old saying about, oh no, avoid hospital food at all costs. Don't believe any of it. Uh, and I, I've experienced it before when I had my pulmonary embolism two years ago. I had nothing. Po I had nothing negative to say about food that I got in hospital. Everything was fresh, hot, cooked straight away. It wasn't bloody airport food, you know, airplane food or some crap like that, or plastic that's supposed to be pasta. It's. I've never experienced crap food in a hospital. Uh, I have to say that this roast dinner that I had I'm very impressed very impressed yeah this was like Toby Carvery maybe not as piled high but packed all on a plate boiling hot vegetables carrots peas potatoes lovely big bit of chicken gravy plus I also had a yogurt as well and it filled me right up filled my boots to the top and uh, yeah, don't don't believe what you what you hear about hospital food, because it may have been back in the day, but it's all done properly now, all freshly cooked. And, um, you know, it's not like it used to be. Uh, so that was mainly it. And then uh, uh, we came home. Um, my brother came up to pick me up in my car. I, I asked him to drive my car because his car's really low and I don't want to be squashing down trying to get in. Uh, and then um, here I am. Um, I'm sp I was supposed to be. See, like I went in on Wednesday. Uh, Thursday. Thursday I came home. Friday was supposed to be my secret Santa at work. So I was supposed to be a full twelve-hour shift. Uh, I didn't go in. Obviously, coming straight out of hospital, a day, you know, less than a day, it'd be stupid to go in, go into work. Uh, and I was also scheduled to work Christmas Eve. And Christmas Day, only six hours eat um, from like two p.m. until six p.m. or eight till to two p.m. to eight p.m. Sorry, yeah, six hours. Uh, but I would have been working on my own, and I think Dad felt, and I I did as well. I was a bit hesitant, and Dad felt that you've just come out of hospital after a major incident. You're not going to be going to work and and, and sitting on your own because anything could happen. You know, if you had a major relapse or. Yeah, so um, we got contacted work, let them know uh, they were able to to get some cover. So it wasn't a problem, uh, but to figure that I needed extra days off, which I really did, because those first couple of days coming out are still very slow. Um, I still had the, a moderate uncomfortable uncomfortableness a moderate pain but like I say it took three to four days for the antibiotics to kick in so there we are so that's pretty much the story um we did me and Papa Bowman I did feel fit enough to actually go out today so we went out for a little walk um the, the pain is gone the aching around the back is gone so the antibiotics kicked in and have done their job uh, I must admit, while I was out walking, it wasn't too strenuous. It was only kind of like around the block. Um, I must admit that it felt probably a lot better than I felt going out for a walk uh, for quite a while, for at least a couple of months. Normally, when we went, used to go out on the Blu-ray hunts for the last two months, you know, I could walk probably 100 yards and I'd be out of breath. You know, I'd be gasping or <sighs> I'd be like that. You know, I might not show it on the camera, you know, but um, it sometimes it was a bit of a struggle. Uh, but we went out, we walked, no out of breath at all, no shortness of breath. Um, I even walked up a slight, a slight hill like that. Uh, a little bit puffy at the top because, you know, size of me, hill. <laughs> but uh, by the time I got to the top, it was perfectly fine and we came back and uh yeah so a lot of that shortness of breath has gone thankfully for for good um a couple for a night or two i still felt a bit icky with the stomach 
I'm kind of like thinking I'm putting it down to maybe something to do with fried foods. Um, because we had to get some something to eat the other night. Uh, and the only thing that I could think of was KFC. So uh, we got um, some chicken and, and a burger and that. Uh, and I think that kind of friedness, the, the fat kind of, yeah. Um, for the last two days, I haven't had anything fried. You know, we had a lovely turkey dinner, turkey roast dinner yesterday with all the vegetables and everything with a bit of Christmas pud. Um, and today I've had a lot of fruit. I've had a lot of fruit in the last couple of days. Um, today we had some more turkey. So we had turkey and, uh, and green peas and a few chips. So that was good today. Tomorrow we've got ham roast. But for the last two days, it's been good. I haven't felt anything lingering. So I'm feeling maybe my stomach problems may be linked to some kind of fat or saturated fat in, in, in foods. So I'm going to kind of like stay off anything kind of fried. Um, I mean, when I do my fry ups, my Weight Watchers fry ups, I don't use cooking fat. Um, I use like one cow spray. Uh, the sausages are 50% less fat. The bacon is medallions and i fry the eggs in one cow so there's you know it's not really a greasy spoon fry up it's a very healthy fry up and i've never had any problem with that kind of it you know that side of it uh, it's always when there's real fat involved not the saturated fat uh but uh yeah we'll, we'll see how it goes uh i don't know whether or not my Doctor is still going to organise an x-ray. I did have an x-ray. There was nothing showing. And when I was in that room, hardly being able to breathe, I wanted oxygen. And I said, I need some oxygen. I need the oxygen. Uh, and the nurse was telling me, you don't need oxygen. Air's getting in your lungs. You're perfectly fine with your oxygen levels. So, obviously, it was something else. Um, my blood sugar level came back. Uh, in the morning, it was like 5.2, I think, uh, but it stabilised and it went up to about 7.1 or something like that. So that's perfectly fine. The bloods are fine. Heart rhythm is fine. There's nothing blocking. Everything else is... it. Where's a bit of wood? Touching wood. <laughs> Everything else was perfectly fine. You know, um, pre-diabetic, you know, so I haven't got to the levels where... I need to have any kind of medication for diabetes. I do regularly get checked with the diabetic nurse. Um, I'm going to have my blood pressure monitored every now and again, because you can request that either with your doctor surgery or your local pharmacist. So but probably every three months, I'm going to, I'm going to request to have that checked both sitting down and standing up. Uh, but the main thing I'm concentrating on the, mo on the moment is uh, drinking more fluid. So drinking a lot more water throughout the day. You know, they say I have six to eight cups. So I'm probably having a, about two litres of, of water a day to keep myself hydrated. Um, and also uh, trying to do a lot more exercise because my job, I sit at work in front of a computer for 12 hours. You know, there's a there's an opportunity to get up for 15 minutes for a break in the morning and then you have an hour's lunch. That's mainly it. Um, and that's one of the problems with low blood pressure, sitting in the same position and not exercising. So the only time I have off is the days when I'm off work. And I don't always go out Blu-ray hunting. You know, I might be sitting here for a couple of hours or half a day watching movies. So again, no exercise. So that's why we went out for the walk today. I'm going to get in a walk every day. Um, even when I'm working, um, I'm going to walk around the office more to get my paperwork off the printer. In my hours lunch break, I'm going to walk around the car park maybe two or three times, you know, to get the heart going and and uh, keep the, all the circulation going and everything like that but dr drinking more as well um, and even in those days where I don't want to go out and and um, I just want to sit at home and watch films I'll try and try and venture out even if it's just a walk around the block yeah so 
Um, I think I've covered mainly everything. I hope I haven't bored you to tears, but I thought I'd give you an update on uh, everything that's happened. And of course, the main thing when I first started getting all out of breath in Tesco's, I thought this was linked to my pulmonary embolism that I had two years ago. I thought, oh no, is it another blood clot? Because it had been mentioned to me like from the doctor that I could have had a, another possible blood clot. Uh, and I am on warfarin and I do have an INR rating of level of between two to three. So I have to keep it between two and three so that the blood doesn't get too thick and the blood doesn't get too runny. Um, and for the last two years, it's basically been between two and three. There's two, I think, two instances where it's gone outside. It dropped to 1.7 way last year, which we compensated by increasing the tablets and then a couple of weeks till about two weeks ago it went to 3.4 but I think that is to do with I started I started taking buscapan for stomach cramps and sometimes things like that can interact with warfarin and other medication so you know it changes it so I stopped taking that got retested the week later it dropped dropped to 3.1 uh, and then in the hospital they checked it and it was three so that's pretty good. I do have another warfarin INR check. Uh, I think it's the 3rd or 4th of January. So it's going to be next week. So um, I'm hoping that um, it's going to be in the between 2 to 3 range. I think maybe it's going to be about 2.7. So if it's that kind of area, I'm happy. I'm very happy. But even the doctor said it's highly unlikely it's a blood clot because you've been brilliant with your warfarin levels you know if it'd been going up and down and it had been like 10 or it'd been like you know one is a possibility but because it's always been stable between two and three highly unlikely um that it would be a blood clot so i was happy with that and when they did the chest x-ray no, they didn't find anything at all so all the airways were clear and everything looked good so uh yeah i don't that's about it um i won't go on anymore because um i was joking that this video was going to go on for half an hour in fact it's 32 minutes later <laughs> but look at this i've been talking non-stop for 32 minutes and i am not out of breath so um whatever happened happened and i got the treatment that i needed the only thing, I'm just going to end on one thing. I'm just going to end on the NHS and the care and the treatment that I got um, from getting an ambulance in half an hour, getting through A&E, seeing the doctors, having all the blood tests, x-ray, which happened within two hours of arriving, getting a bed overnight, getting the fluids, I can't, I can't fault it. I can't fault the NHS. Even when I had a pulmonary embolism, they were magnificent. Every single area was incredible. Um, and the attention to detail that they go into, the running around that they do, the patients that they have to put up with. I've got to give them props for it because... Even the other night, there were times when there's a, a, an old gentleman that had problems swallowing and he needed to swallow some water to take some tablets. And they were there with him for a good 20 minutes. And every time he tried to take a bit of water, he, he just could not swallow. Uh, and they were like, swallow, swallow the water, swallow the water. And it was like that for 20 minutes. You, you got to swallow the water. For some of us, it would be like, you know, after like the 10th attempt, for God's sake, swallow the water. We we wouldn't be able to do it. It would annoy us. But never once was there an angry voice. Never once was there a pissed off voice. Never once did they complain about being on their feet. Uh, and that Thursday... I from six o'clock in the morning until the time I got out of there, which was about ten to six in the evening, 
on the Thursday, the nurses were just back and forth, back and forth. I mean, stepometer wise, that it must have been about a hundred thousand steps back and forth doing all sorts of stuff you know go to one patient give another patient tablets check on the blood pressure on that patient uh make the bed for that well they have other people to make the beds in that but you know what i'm talking about you know what i mean so so don't ever complain about the nhs not for a single minute um they are out on their asses every single day and they don't get paid enough. We know this. We've seen this in the news and they are striking to get a better pay. OK, so they're probably not going to get the 19 and a half percent, but they've got to start somewhere and negotiate. The only problem is the government and the pen pushers at the NHS that just sit there. They're the people that are not negotiating. You know, it's not the nurses. It's not the doctors. It's not the GPs that are to blame they're doing their job they love doing their job and it's just other people need to negotiate and the problem is the government don't want to negotiate they don't want to go into a room and come up with an acceptable an acceptable raise for these people um and i think that's absolutely despicable I think that is so despicable. Look at the shit that we went through with the pandemic. Look at the crap that these nurses and these doctors went through, what they had to endure. Watching people die in front of them, left, right and centre, and have masks strapped to their faces, tight, all PPE, for like 12 hours on end, not seeing relatives, having to stay away, couldn't go home to see their kids, in, in fear of taking the virus home and just being with these patients while they were just dying everywhere. So it really gets to me. This, this really gets to me. So, yeah, the NHS is the best, the best of British. It's the best medical care that we could possibly imagine. Yeah, it's been strained over the years, but it's not their problem. It's not their fault. It's not the nurses' fault. It's not the doctors' fault. It's the people higher up in the government. Um, and they need to do something about it. Because if the NHS collapses completely, we're all screwed. We're totally screwed. And nobody wants a privatised National Health Service. Not, not like they have in America. No way. Um... Because I've even heard of things like, you know, if you've got health care in America, you call an ambulance. It's 1,500 quid just to call an ambulance. Uh, Lulu, her, her stepdad, had a problem in uh, when he was flying once and he had needed a me me uh, medical emergency. And they had to divert the plane and land and he had, had to go and have medical emergency and, oper and an operation. Now, he's got, you know, he had medical care. He had medical insurance when he was in America for 10 years. But the bill was $25,000, which, you know, the medical insurance doesn't cover. So you'll find yourself paying for that for a, probably a decade. When Lou was in America, every time she wanted, when she was on kidney dialysis and she wanted to dialyse, $500 every time to have kidney dialysis. So you can see how lucky we are. If it means paying extra NHS, you know, national insurance from our wages to help the NHS, I'm all for it. I'm all for it. So, yes, we've got the NHS. You know, it's one of the best things that Labour ever did you know, to to give us the NHS. But unfortunately, over the years, I don't want to get too political, but what the Conservatives are doing, they're ruining it. They are, they are starting to destroy what we have, and we can't have that. So um, I'll be thinking about, I'll be thinking about 
I'll be thinking about how I'm going to be voting on the next election. Let's just put it that way. Uh, but I'm not getting into any kind of political because um, I'll still review who's going to give us the best thing if we do, you know, have an, a general election at, at one point. But it's just something to think about. You know, in the state of the country at the moment, with the rail strikes, you know, bus strikes, Amazon are going on strike in, in some places. Um, border staff, it's, it's falling apart. The country is falling apart because there are no negotiations. And when they do have negotiations, they just shut it down. So, yeah, they seriously need to sort shit out because with well, the cost of living as well. Um, it needs it really needs to get sorted. But um, I, I am going to stop now because I don't want to keep going on. Uh, I, I, I've said everything that I wanted to say. Uh, there's probably more that I want to say, but um, I don't want to put it any more into the video because it's gone on for quite a long time. It's like 40 minutes, so... By the time we finish the video, it's going to be a like 45 minute video. But if you have watched the video through right to here, then thank you. I really appreciate it. Um, I just wanted to explain everything that happened and so that people had a better understanding of what, you know, I've been through the last two years and specifically the last couple of months, you know, with the hospital stay. I will keep giving them some medical um updates every now and again in either the live chats or or maybe when we're out doing some blu-ray hunting uh but yeah there we go so that is it um it's now the 26th yeah it's boxing day today <laughs> i can't remember what day it was even dad's been forgetting what bloody day it is you know christmas day being on a sunday so i've got another day off work before i have to go back to work on wednesday uh, it's not going to be much happening, you know, there's only like three of us in, uh, but uh, I can't see much happening, so it's going to be quite easy days, uh, and I'll um, certainly get some uh, steps in while I'm at work and, and make sure I'm drinking the fluids and that. But yeah, there we go, I hope you enjoyed the video, uh, like it by giving it some thumbs up, blah, 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 blah. don't forget to subscribe, comment and share, thank you all for everything that you've done and uh, your continued viewing, um, interacting with me and thinking about me and um, the, the same I think about a lot of my a lot of my viewers. I love to interact and uh, I really don't know what I would do if I didn't have my YouTube platform and the, and the channel because um, it has given me enjoyment over the years, a lot of enjoyment. I've been doing it for a good six or seven years now and uh, Mama Bowman always loved it and um it gives me purpose and it gives me something to focus on and something that i really enjoy so yeah so there we go so yeah until the next video then i'll let you go enjoy the rest of your day um this video will probably go up the day after boxing day so i hope you had a great christmas and a great boxing day and uh we'll start up some blu-ray hunts maybe next year in the, in the new year but there will be a couple of other videos coming including um, my top films of 2022 and most anticipated films of 2023 as well so there we go so until the next video bye bye everybody i love you all and um, i'll see you on the next one very soon that was a bit corny wasn't it <laughs> i love you all <laughs> bye bye